Hey everyone, I'm Jay, and this is the first part in a two-part series on media query in CSS. Uh, so the first part, I'm going to talk about uh, what it is, what we use it for, what the syntax is, a bit about breakpoints, and then in the second video, we'll actually dive in, write some code, and see it in action. So let's get started. First, what is the media query for? Okay, what's its purpose? And the purpose is pretty simple, right? It's 2021 now. Uh, we've had multiple screen sizes for quite a few years now, and each of those screen sizes has to have a website uh, that caters its layout to that screen size. By no means we should have the same layout on a phone versus a large desktop screen or anywhere in between. Not really. Um, there are going to be some similarities on phones and tablets versus laptops and desktops, as we can see in this example here. Um, but uh, font sizes need to change. You want a uh, comparatively larger font size on a smaller screen. Uh, and by that, I mean less words up all the way across the screen, less words uh, needed to fill the screen. So the words, relatively speaking, are larger compared to the screen itself, right? Um, and we need to move around the layouts, the, the traditional Holy Grail layout with a left sidebar and a right sidebar and a middle area and a header and a footer and all that. It's not really going to fit on a phone. It's not really going to fit on a tablet uh, unless it's in landscape mode, then maybe. Uh, but it's it's going to need a larger screen size, right? And we're going to have to reorganize that same information to fit in some different layout on a phone. We want to have that same information there. We don't want to give phone users uh, less information. 60% of all internet traffic is on phones now. And if you give them less information, uh, you're going to get less feedback, you're going to get less customers, you're going to get less everything on your on your website. And you're not going to reach your target audience with the full capabilities that you you could. Right? So multiple screen sizes require, each screen sizes require a little bit different layout than the next one. So how we do that, first let's look at the syntax of how we write the media query itself, and then uh, we'll talk about how to organize it a little bit. Uh, so first, the way we write it, it's the at symbol, the word media, and then we have uh, some parameter lists, uh, curly braces, and then within those curly braces, that's where we put all of our CSS. A full, a selector, CSS properties, the whole thing goes inside here. So we have a little bit of a hierarchy of uh, the media query with CSS inside of it. Uh, before the media query, we're just going to have normal CSS. So what you can do is pick one screen size to be your default where you write all your CSS. I recommend that be the phone, all right? So that we can start with a mobile and then extrapolate up. Phones have less processing power and less internet speed in general, right? Uh, so we give them less work to do. They're going to be the default. And then everybody else gets more CSS piled on top of that within media queries for larger screens. So we have our normal CSS for the phone. And then for each different screen size, we're going to have a media query with additional CSS on top of that to make changes. For example, um, if you're using a grid, you can use a grid layout for the phone and then have a media query that rearranges that grid for other sizes. We don't have to redo uh, things like coloring and all that. That's going to be in the default. We only have to put the changes that we want to make on top of the default. That's what we've got to put in the media query. So this is the basic syntax. We have at media, and we have some parameters, which we'll talk about in the next couple of slides. And then all of our CSS goes in there. And putting CSS in there, that will be for the second video. Right, so I have a link 
I'll link to a code pen that's also going to be for the second video, uh, Mozilla developer page for the media query, okay, and I'll link to these slides as well for anyone who uh, wants to look at these. So the first part of the parameters of the media query is the where are we going to have this CSS? Is it going to be for the screen or is it going to be for the printed page? Okay. There used to be some other parameters we could put here. They've been deprecated. And there may be new parameters in the future, which is why the all keyword is not recommended. Okay. I don't recommend you use it. It's not recommended at all. Uh, because if your website exists for any length of time, it is possible that all might represent more than just print and screen in the future. It's also possible that some of those older devices where there had been something but it's been deprecated, those things might still be in existence, uh, and you might accidentally be writing some code that applies to them that you didn't know about. Uh, so, only recommended to use the keywords print, screen, or comma separate them, put them together, uh, if you want both of them. Uh, or if you really only want screen, you can also write only screen instead of just the word screen. There's really not much difference, okay? Um, but definitely useful to do a print media query as well. That's a little bit of a separate case and I won't be talking specifically about that in this video, but they are definitely useful. Okay. So once we've decided where our media query is going to apply, now we have to decide which screen sizes are we going to apply our media query to. And I want to note that it's called screen. We're talking about screen sizes, but it's actually the browser window size. So if I'm on a desktop, and I am right now, I could have my browser not full screen, right? It could be any size. And this media query is going to go to whatever that size is, not necessarily the full width of my entire screen. That would only apply if I was in full screen mode in my browser. Generally, I am, but that you know that's not a hundred percent of the time true, even for me. Uh, and I know there are some people out there that never full screen their browser. So uh, it's called screen. We're talking about screen sizes, but what we really mean is just the browser window. And really, we're we're primarily only concerned with the width. There are some other values that we can put in here. But for this video, I'm only talking about width. So uh, generally, there are three types of parameters that we'll want to talk about. We'll want to talk about all the screens that are smaller than a certain size, or all the screens that are larger than a certain size, or all the screens that are in between some low value and some high value. Um, and so I have an example of each one of those here. The first one is actually the uh, everything that is 900 pixels and larger. Okay. Uh, so if we wanted to write a media query and target some CSS to all screens that are 900 pixels and larger, that includes exactly that 900 pixel width, we would write a media screen and, and then within parentheses, we write min width. 900 pixels. So anything that is a minimum width of 900 pixels or larger uh, will be targeted in this media query and then any CSS selectors that we put in there will apply to whatever elements they're selected to apply. Uh, so the next one will be anything smaller than 900 pixels and take sharp notice that I did 899 pixels and not 900 pixels. Uh, and the reason for that is if I have two media queries, one smaller than a size, one larger than a size, and they both come up to, in this case, they come up to 900 pixels. What I don't ever want to do is write one that's 900 pixels and above and one that's 900 pixels and below, because there will be people who have a screen size or screen width of exactly 900 pixels. 
and they're going to get both. And they're going to get some unexpected result that you didn't plan for. Um, you know, we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that there's one pixel difference so that nobody gets both of these. Um, we can write media queries that do overlap, and we can do that on purpose, but we don't want to do it on accident because we wrote 900 in two places. Make sure one of them is 899 and one of them is 900, or one of them is 900 and one of them is 901, whatever the case is, um, make sure they're just one pixel apart. Your browser is going to do the rounding for you. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about decimals. Um, so we have the larger one. The smaller one is any screen width up to a maximum of 899 pixels. Um, we can write any values we want in here, of course, but I'm using 900 as my breakpoint. And we'll talk about breakpoints in an upcoming slide here. Uh, so this is the anything above a certain point, anything below a certain point. And then the last one, if we have a high end, we have a maximum width and a minimum width, and we want to target anything that's in between those two values, uh, we're just going to put both of them. We're going to write at media screen, okay, it's screen still, and we have minimum screen width of 600 pixels and a maximum width of 899. I'm still using that 899. Um, and we have that upper and lower bounds. Okay, so we have a single bound, just a lower bound, just an upper bound, or a lower and an upper bound. Uh, the order of these two things I don't think matters uh, when you do both an upper and a lower. I don't think it matters. I generally start with a small and work my way up because I always am doing media queries from smallest to largest. Uh, and you should always do them from smallest to largest as well. Smaller devices come first because they'll do, they're going to apply things first and then they're not going to do the other media queries. The larger devices may do multiple media queries because they may fit into this command that we write here. A larger screen may fit into multiple media queries and they will apply both of them. Okay or all of the ones that they fit into. How do we know which one is going to fit into it? How do we decide what values to put in? That's breakpoints. Okay, uh, Breakpoints are where we want to break apart an upper and lower bound uh, or any one of these boundaries. We want to set breakpoints. So a uh, pretty common way of doing it is we identify, we have this chart right here, all orange dots are popular screen sizes, so you identify your popular screen sizes, and then uh, you make some breakpoints based on those popular screen sizes. So this is an example of the wrong way to do it. What you don't want to do ever is create a breakpoint that's right at any screen size, okay? What happens is if I have a common screen size of 1024, for example, and I make a breakpoint at 1024, it means everybody who has a 1024 screen size, they're an edge case now. They are right at that edge, right at that breakpoint. And depending on how I code it, or depending on how their version of their browser runs, um, whether or not the, the scroll bar counts as their screen or not, or what have you, uh, they're going to get some amount of unexpected results. Okay, And we don't want unexpected results of any kind for our users because they're going to get an unexpected type of experience. We want to make sure that their experience is exactly the way we planned it to be. So we should not make breakpoints on any particular screen size. So what we can do instead, here's the same chart, but uh, the lines have now been drawn in between some of the screen sizes because you'll know like all the phones are going to kind of be grouped together in a particular size. All the tablets are going to be grouped together. All the desktops are going to be grouped together because they're going to kind of be separated by space by their screen size, right? So if we make the lines in between these groups, in this example, we have phones in this group here, or smaller than phones even, right? We don't even have to 
count anything smaller than a phone that doesn't exist. Uh, and then we made a breakpoint in between, somewhere in between phones and tablets. Uh, this has actually broken tablets apart into portrait mode and landscape mode. Um, and then desktop here and larger screens up here. So I have a little bit better of a visualization right here. Also a link to uh, where I originally got this image because I stole it. I'm not a content creator, I'm a teacher. Uh, so I link back to this uh, pretty good write up about why these breakpoints are a good selection. Um, and they set the breakpoint in between popular screen sizes. Okay, not at screen sizes, but in between them. That way, there's not going to be very many, if any, edge cases. You're going to find edge cases uh, somewhere around here. That's going to be desktop users who are not full screen. They may be an edge case, okay? But if they're not full screen, that means they have their browser window just occupying a part of their screen. If it looks too crowded, they're naturally just going to expand their window, right? And then it's going to pop into that next breakpoint that you've set. So those people are taken care of just by the nature of how computers work, right? And if they have their browser window like that, they're probably, they probably know how to resize their browser window. That's why they're using one, right? Hopefully, hopefully they do. So good examples right there. And let's look at what that code would look like. So I, I've commented and labeled each one. You'll notice there's way more media queries here than there were breakpoints here. So I have one, two, three, four breakpoints separating five sections, okay? And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight media queries for those five sections, right? And that is because I have, let's take a look back here. I have a media query for phones, only phones. I have a media query for tablets that are in portrait. So I have a low and a high for that one. I have tablets that are landscape. I have a low and a high for that one. I have desktop. I have a low and a high, a min and a max setting for that. And I have big desktop. So I have all those five, but I also have a media query for tablet portrait and larger, tablet landscape and larger, desktop and larger. Okay, so three extra ones, so five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I don't need an and larger for the phone because that's everything that's not phone. Uh, and I don't have an and larger for the big desktop because it's the biggest. Okay, so the two ends. Um, they don't have a duplicate, so to speak, but all the ones in the middle, they, I've set a breakpoint for that size and all the larger sizes as well. And this will help you to not have to duplicate your CSS as often. So from smallest to largest, I have the media query that is just for phones, okay? And we've set all these breakpoints to be at round numbers. So this breakpoint is at 600. So phones are everything up to 599. Tablets in portrait mode start at six pixels. And there's two media queries. One, not six pixels, 600 pixels. Two media queries. There's tablet portrait and everything larger. So just anything 600 pixels and larger. And then there's tablet portrait and only that mode, okay? Uh, or only that size, so it starts at the 600 and it goes up to the next breakpoint, 900, so it goes to 899. Uh, and then I've done the same thing for the tablet landscape size. I have 900 and larger, and then I have 900 only up to that one breakpoint. So these added three that are, they have an upper and a lower bounds, uh, those are added Strictly speaking, they aren't required. You can get away with not having them, but they do help you if you have a customized CSS that you're making from scratch. They do help you to limit the amount of duplicate code you have to write. Um, 
what would it look like without that is if you're using a third party CSS platform, for example, Bootstrap, they already have their own breakpoints already well established. They've been around for, I don't know, a decade maybe. Um, I don't know when they started, but they've been around for a time. They're on version five already. They're well established. They're not going to be changing their breakpoints probably um, because a million people have already been using it, right? So the way their breakpoints work is uh, the first one is everything smaller than 576. And notice they have less than here and all the other ones are greater than or equal to. So remember that one pixel difference. Uh, and I'll show you how they probably write their breakpoints in actually in CSS as well in the next slide. Um, so less than 576, greater than or equal to 576. And then for each size, they only have uh, a media clear for that size and larger, that size and larger. And so let's say, for example, you have some CSS that you want to run on the medium size, not on any of the other sizes, because they, they all run from smallest to biggest. You can ignore the extra small and the small put your CSS in the medium size, and then in the large size, you need to undo that change. And what will happen is the extra small and the small won't get the change that you made. The medium will get the change, and then the large and anything bigger than that will get the undo that you put in there. So you will have to duplicate code in the event that you want to write some style that's for one size only okay so it does happen not nearly as often as the norm not nearly as often as as not needing it okay um, and one of the reasons that bootstrap for example does it this way and they don't put those codes in there is they're a framework they're a css library collection of a bunch of stuff in here and they get included into millions of websites so they need to keep their code base small and they need to not duplicate their code by putting one, two, three, four extra media queries. And the way they function for every media query, they have to write a lot of extra code in there. Um, and so they don't do that. And just by saying, all right, we're always going to operate from smallest to largest, it creates a, a fairly simple and straightforward way of doing things. If you ever need uh, some code that runs on only one size or uh, multiple sizes, but not all the way up. Let's say I have some code that I want to run on medium, large, and extra large, but I want it to stop on the extra, extra large. I'll write it in the medium. It will cascade through to the large and to the extra large, and then I'll undo it on the extra, extra large. So that's how that works. And the media queries are a little bit simpler. We just have one media query for each size and says uh, the extra small one starts at zero, stops at 575. Okay, remember that one pixel difference. And then all the rest of them start at whatever the size is and go up from there. All right, and so that's everything that I have on media queries. For some further reading for anyone who is interested in looking at um, a nice bit of code and an explanation on how to get your font size to be uh, automatically reactive to different screen sizes, I'll link this uh, article from CSS Tricks. It's pretty cool. It has a function in there where they figured out the math and you just have to plug in some numbers. Right? It looks fairly complicated, but like I said, they did all the work already for you. You can just plug it in once you read the article, if you like how it's used. Um, it's a good read. It gets you thinking. And uh, there are definitely multiple ways of doing this same task. So don't think that this is the only way. Um, but it is interesting anyway. Right. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll actually write some code and experiment with it and see what it does. Thanks for watching.